you want to see what's inside the Magical Mystery Bead Box for the month of April? Keep watching because we're going to do an unboxing and then we'll also do a beautiful tassel necklace using the beads from that box. Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Louisa. How are we doing today? If you're new, please don't forget to subscribe because it helps my channel and it helps me to stay motivated to make more videos for you. Before we begin, let me remind you about the timestamps down in the description so you can skip through to whatever portion of the video you want to watch. If you've already subscribed, welcome back. Thank you for being here. Do you want to see what's inside the Magical Mystery Bead Box for the... My cat just did a video bomb. His name's Boo Boo. Let me show you. He's adorable, isn't he? He's so soft and very friendly. Are you ready to have some fun? We're going to open up the Magical Mystery Bead Box for the month of April and then we'll make a gorgeous long tassel necklace using the beads from that box. Now if you're not familiar with the Jesse James Beads Magical Mystery Bead Box subscription, I'll leave a link down below so you can go to the website and check it out. You can buy an annual plan, you can buy a six month plan, you can even buy the single box if you just want to see what's in it. But anyway, I'll leave the link down below so you can go visit the website. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's take a look inside this lovely box. See what's inside. The box is called Animal Instinct. And on the back is a list of all the contents, as you can see. And here it says post a picture of your box or jewelry made with your box. And it says to do it by the 9th of June to receive a $5 gift card. So, anyway, guys, if you go onto the Jesse James Speeds Facebook page and post a picture of your jewelry, with the hashtag MMBBWild, you could receive a $5 gift card if you win the design challenge. So that's kind of neat. Okay, let's have a look inside the box. And boy, does that look lovely. Look at all these colors. Very earthy looking. We have this packet with some chain and it looks like either seeds or chips. I'm not sure, I'll have to open it up. We have this lovely bead mix. Oh my gosh, look at that. And we have a piece of leather cord, flat. And we have a beautiful tassel, very nice. And we have this gorgeous bead strand. Look at that, guys. Oh my gosh. And here's another one. I love that. I love the colors. And this looks like a box of twisted tube beads. And we have another packet here of very interesting looking beads. So let's go ahead and go through each one real quick. This first one is a mini bead mix and the name of it is One with Nature. So let's take a look. Look at all these lovely beads. Oh my gosh, if you like animal prints and you like earth tones, this is the bead mix for you. Absolutely gorgeous. Let me sort them out. Aren't these pretty? Oh my gosh, look at all these gorgeous beads. I love these ceramic beads. Look at that. They almost look like melon beads, but I love the colors. We have these lovely faceted beads here and these other ones and all kinds of faceted beads, teardrop shape. I like these. These are really cute. They have a flat top and bottom and I love the color. And then we have tiny teardrop shapes and cage beads over here, more ceramic beads. Look at these. Aren't they interesting? And then we have these metal beads with pretty large holes. Rhinestone beads and these other ones. I'm not sure what kind of bead that is, but it's very interesting looking. And some copper metal beads, some daisy spacers, bicones, faceted rondelles, more faceted beads over here and these other ones. I love these. A couple of charms, aren't they cute? And these large jump rings with a twisted design. And here they are on a rod so you can see how they're drilled. 
These are like teardrop shape, but they're flat and they're faceted. Very interesting. And I love these two here. Oh my gosh. And these lovely faceted beads here and the teardrop. These are so gorgeous. Here are some more. Some more ceramic beads, the cage beads with a little black crystal inside of them. These other ones with a kind of a textured surface. These have a little bit of gold where the hole is, which makes it look like a bead cap, sort of. Beautiful. And these teardrop shaped beads are nice. And, and I love these metallic beads. I guess I didn't thread all of them on. There's one more here, so you get a total of four. I love these faceted rondelles. They come in so handy. And here are the rest of them. Mine is the two charms and the jump rings. They're actually not jump rings. They're closed rings. I took a closed look and there are no openings. They're closed. So that's kind of nice. It's nice to have closed rings in your designs if you're looking for a connecting component or something else that is more secure. But here are the rest of them. And I love rhinestone beads. I don't think I've ever seen them with black crystals. I love these copper leaves. And these are very interesting. I love the finish. Each one of these is different. That's what I like about them. And of course, you can always uh, use bicones in your designs. And I put the daisy spaces together here. So you get quite a few beads in that one little mini bead mix. Look at that. Don't these bead strands look lovely? Look at all these gorgeous beads. This first one here is called Jungle Explorer. And aren't these beads unique? Oh my gosh, look at all these beautiful beads. We have a bead cap here and another one at the other end. And then we have these ceramic beads and these clay beads. Oh my gosh, faceted rondelles, spacer beads. And this one in the middle is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that, look how unique that is. And these other ones, these look like they might be wooden beads right here, these two. But I love all these, look at this. And you get two of each one except for the center one. Okay, there's only one of this one. But that means you can make earrings or you can make symmetrical designs. And then we have this other one here. The name of this strand is called Safari Queen. And these are a little bit smaller than the previous strand, but look how beautiful these beads are. Look at this lovely crystal here. And there are all kinds of spacer beads as you can see. Quite a few this time. But these colors are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Here are some frosted faceted beads. Just beautiful. I love these here because they have a large hole. These would definitely look good on leather cord. Beautiful beads guys, look at the colors. Look how neutral and natural these colors look. I love it. And here we have a mix called a Safari Bead and Shell Set. Let's have a look. Oh my gosh, I love these animal prints. They're so unique and I love the different shapes. Look at these prints on these shell beads. Oh my gosh, that looks like snake skin right there. Look at that. And this one looks like giraffe, and this one looks like tiger. Aren't these gorgeous? Look how different these are. Oh my gosh. I love these. So these are the shell beads. Here are the rest of them. These are the safari beads. Look how unusual these are. Wow. And these have very large holes, as you can see. This one too, so this one would work really well on leather cord. I love these ones with a zebra print. I know Jesse James beads went through a lot of trouble to find these beads. I mean, where else can you find these beads? I don't think I've seen anything like this anywhere. Now these look like twisted bugle beads. On the card it says Wild Minis Trio Set. So I'm assuming that's what these are. Let me give you a close up. As you can see, we have three different colors. We have like a bronze color, silver, and copper. Aren't these pretty? These would actually look really nice simply threaded onto beading wire. And the little twist on them catches the light really nicely as you can see. You get quite a few in each of the colors and I love it. Here we have a large tassel and the name of this tassel is called Into the Wild. And it's a brown color with a silver cap as you can see. And this would definitely make a nice pendant. This is actually an 18 inch 
piece of European flat leather, five millimeter in size, in the color hazelnut, and it's imported from Spain. How cool is that? So I thought this was a button clasp, but it's not. It's actually a slider, as you can see. It's actually sterling silver plated with a little sun design on the surface. And of course, it's the right size for this flat leather cord. And then we have this magnetic clasp, as you can see. Very handy. So right there, you have the makings of a gorgeous bracelet. Look at this lovely long piece of beaded chain. Oh my gosh, these are tiger eye chips. I measured almost four feet, 47 inches to be precise. And that is a huge amount of chain. The fact that it's a gemstone is very impressive. And you can do so much with this. You can make so many pieces. You can make bracelets, necklaces. The possibilities are endless. Earrings. And it combines so nicely with all these beads. I love tiger eye chips. I was actually looking for this one here, the Feather Friends Tassel Pair. And I almost threw it out. I was going to throw this pretty pink shredded paper away. And then I found them at the bottom right here. Thank goodness I looked. But aren't these adorable? Oh my gosh, look how pretty these are. These would make great earrings. Okay, let's get started with our necklace. We're going to use this lovely tassel as the focal pendant, but we're going to dress it up and I'm going to show you how in just a few moments. We're also going to use one of the beads from the Safari Bead and Shell Mix. And we'll be using this one right here. We're going to be using a bunch of beads from this mini bead mix. So let me go ahead and dump them out. You're also going to need two long pieces of one millimeter leather cord. And I cut myself two pieces. Each one is about 24 inches long, but it all depends on how long you want the beaded portion of your necklace to be. But anyway, I cut myself two 24 inch pieces. You're also going to need a needle and some thread. Now I happen to have some fine line because I'm a bead weaver, but if you don't have fine line, you can use regular thread okay I'm pretty sure it'll work just fine so you're going to cut yourself a 12 inch piece of thread and I always like to flatten my end so that it's easier to thread you're going to thread it through your needle and you're going to make a knot with the two ends Just a regular knot will do, okay? You can snip off the tails so they're not so long. Okay, so here you have a needle and a loop of thread. Next, you take a bead and it has to have a relatively big hole, okay? You thread it through the needle and bring it down to the middle of the thread. Then take the loop and thread one of the tassel bits through the loop like this. And then simply take your bead down to where the tassel is, pull the thread, and that slides the bead right onto the tassel. Just like that, okay? And now all you have to do is make a little knot as close to the end as possible. Now be careful because this does break if you pull too hard. Pull just enough to get that knot nice and tight and that should hold the bead in place. Now I'm not going to put too many beads on here. Okay, I just want a little something to give it a little bit of decoration. I think I'm going to choose this copper leaf. You need to look at the orientation of the leaf, figure out how you want it to sit and then thread it through. Bring it down to your thread, take the loop of your thread, open it up, take a tassel thread it through the loop like this and then bring that bead down and very carefully and very gently pull that tassel through the bead just like that okay make a little knot So now we have two beads on here. We have this copper one and we have this sparkly one. Isn't that cute? 
going to put something on this piece here because I was working with it earlier and it broke off as you can see. So I'm going to try putting a bead on a little higher on the tassel. Thread it through the needle onto the loop and take the tassel and now slide the bead onto the tassel and make a little knot. Very gently tighten it up. And this is what we have so far. Just a little something to give it a little interest. I think I'm going to do one more copper bead. Here's the bead. Thread it onto the needle. Slide it down to your thread. Take the loop of your thread, open it, decide which tassel you're going to use, and thread it through the loop. Fold it, then slide that bead down nice and slow and carefully so you don't break your tassel. If you take your time, you should be able to get it through. Once it's through, remove your thread and make a little knot. Slide that bead down, and there you go. That is so cute. I may add some more later on, but I'm going to start building the necklace now because I don't want to run out of beads. So let's put this aside. Here are the beads from the mini bead mix. I'm going to also grab some of the beads from this strand, and the strand is Safari Queen. Okay, so let me snip it. So I'm going to grab these smaller rondelles the dark one and the light one and the silver spacer and I think there are a couple more down here so here's the smaller rondelle here's the silver spacer bead and here's the other smaller rondelle and I do see a couple of other spacer beads down there and more of these beads so I'm going to pull them out I may or may not use them but I'm going to just line them up so that they're handy so these are the beads from the bead mix and these are the beads from the strand Safari Queen. Now some of these beads have tiny holes and they're not going to fit on one millimeter cord. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them into little charms. To make the charms you will need some head pins and you can use either a bronze, a silver or a gold. I'm going to use a gold because that's what I happen to have. So basically this is very easy but I'm going to show you how in case you've never done it before. You take a head pin, thread it through a bead just like that. Take some round nose pliers give it a little kink, 90 degree angle, reposition, take the wire and wrap it around the nose of your pliers, reposition your pliers, flip them around and then continue wrapping towards the back just like that. Take them off the pliers, grab the loop with another set of pliers and with another set I like to use needle nose pliers. Grab the end and just do a couple of wraps. Two to three is good. Once you do your couple of wraps, you simply snip off the excess and then tuck in whatever bit is sticking out. And that's all there is to it. Okay, let me show you one more time. I think I'll do a bicone this time. and maybe one of these teardrop shaped beads. Okay. You wanna place your pliers at the top of the bead. Give the wire a kink, reposition, take the end, wrap it around the nose, flip your pliers around and continue to wrap to the back like this. Take it off the pliers, grab the loop with another set, and then take the end and wrap it around. Snip off the excess, 
and tuck in the end. Okay, so now we have two. So now I'm going to continue to build these little charms. I'm basically going to use all of these beads up, okay, because I want to put as many of these as I can on the necklace. So let me do that off camera and I'll meet you back. Okay, I'm back. I wrapped all my charms, as you can see, my dangles, and I'm ready to start. So you want to start with your tassel, okay, and you will need your leather cord. You're going to take both pieces and thread them through the loop of the tassel like this. Bring the tassel to the center. Once you have it in the center, take your focal bead and you're going to thread all the cords through that focal bead. The hole is pretty big so it should be pretty easy. Bring that focal bead down so that it covers the loop and it sits right on top of that bead cap just like that. Separate your cord so you have two on each side and you're going to do a knot, just a regular overhand knot. Now when you're doing knots you need to take your time and bring that knot down as close to the bead as you can. Same thing on this side. Bring it down and tighten up the knot. So this is what you should have. So far so good. The first thing we're going to do is to thread on one of these ceramic beads and you're going to take two of the cords and thread it through the hole. Bring it down, same thing on this side, and bring it down. Okay, so far so good. Now we're going to separate the cords and we're going to start threading on beads and you get to choose what you want to thread on. Okay. It has to be random, but you want it to be balanced, okay? In other words, you don't want big beads on one side and small beads on the other side. You want everything evenly distributed. So what I would recommend that you do is uh, switch sides often, okay? So work on the left for a little bit and then switch and work on the right. You want it nice and random. So thread your beads on. You can thread anything that fits on the one millimeter cord except for the ceramic beads. Okay, we're going to reserve those for something else I'm going to show you in just a second. Okay, and you're going to build about an inch or an inch and a half worth of beads. And don't forget the charms, throw in a charm here and there. Let me slide these beads out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. This is what we have so far. Okay. It's about an inch or so on both sides. Once you have about an inch worth of beads, then grab a ceramic bead and I think I want to use this one here and you want to thread both cords through the ceramic bead. Same thing on this side, exact same bead. So even though it's random, it's still balanced, okay? We're still balancing it out by using similar beads on both sides. Okay, once you've done that, now we're going to continue to thread beads. We're going to build another set. Let's 
see what we have so far. That looks pretty good. So once you have another inch worth of beads, add another ceramic bead and I'm going to add this cube. It's so beautiful. I love it. One on that side and one on this side. Take out whatever slack you may see. Make sure the beads are up against each other and then have a look and see how it looks. Now what I would recommend that you do at this point is to take it to the mirror and hold it up to see how it looks and to see whether or not you want to add more beads. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I think I'm going to add another inch worth of beads. So once again, thread on your beads randomly. I'm going to reserve these two for the very top. I'm going to top off each strand with one of these because the hole's pretty big and I can fit two cords through it. So I'll put those aside. Okay, that's about an inch. So now I'm going to slide on one of these gold beads, threading both cords through the one bead. Bring it down. Same thing on this side. And now you need to look at your beads, make sure they're all up against each other. Okay. Take out whatever slack you may see in your leather. Doesn't that look beautiful, guys? Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. I love it. I am going to add some more embellishments to these tassels, but I may have to go to my stash to get some gold beads or something because these aren't going to fit on the leather tassels. All right, so once you have the gold beads threaded on, you're going to do a simple knot. A simple overhand knot on this side and another one on this side. Make sure it's nice and tight. And this is what you should have. Okay. Once you have your two knots, you're going to do another knot about an inch further up. An inch, three quarters of an inch, something like that, okay? Now what I would recommend that you do is to not tighten it until you get the other side done to make sure they're both even, okay? So do both of them, but don't tighten them and then check them out. Make sure they're both even. And then once they're even, you can go ahead and tighten them up. And the reason we're doing this is so that we can show some of the beautiful leather. Okay. So once you have those two additional knots done, check them, make sure both lengths are the same and you're going to thread on this leaf charm on one side, this other dangle that we made, same thing on this side, leaf charm on one cord, dangle on the other cord, take a look to see how they sit. And then I am going to use one of these cage beads. So you're going to thread both cords through the cage bead. There's one. And let me put the other one on. Oh, 
Okay, so that's on. Doesn't that look adorable? Okay, so once you have those beads on there, you don't have to knot it at the top. Um, they can just be loose. Now we're going to do some cord ends, okay, and we're going to make our own cord ends. The only challenge with cord ends is that you have to make sure you put them on in the exact same spot on both sides, okay? So that's a little challenging, but we can do it. You'll need some artistic wire, 20 gauge. You'll need two four inch pieces. You're going to kink it about a third of the way down, just like when you're doing wrap loops. Okay, but it's a little bit different because what you're going to do now is you're going to actually wrap the long end. Normally when you do a wrap loop you wrap the short end. In this case you're going to wrap the long end. So you're going to grab it, wrap it around the nose of your plier like this, bring it around to the back just like you would when you're doing a wrap loop. And this is what you should have. Okay, take it off the pliers. Get your necklace and I would recommend that you put a little clip on one end so you don't lose those beads, okay? And take the end that you're going to work on. Decide where you want to attach your cord end, okay? I'm going to put mine here so I'll have about an inch worth of leather showing. And this is how I do it guys, okay? I try not to complicate my life too much because these are not easy. But I take my cord and I put it right on top of the loop, just like this, okay? Both pieces. Now you might want to measure the distance between the bead and your loop just to make sure that you have the exact same distance when you go to do the other side. So I have about an inch and a half, okay? Once you have your leather cord on top of the loop, you're going to grab the loop and the cord just like this with a set of pliers needle nose pliers, take the long end and wrap it around both the cord and the wire and do one wrap, okay? Don't do any more than one wrap for now because I'm going to do the other end before I go any further to make sure that both ends are identical, okay? So once again, get your wire, kink it about a third of the way down like this. Go to the long end and do a loop. Okay, once you have your loop, take both cords from the other end, just like you did before. Place it on your loop on the short end of your wire. Measure it, make sure you have the exact distance. I need to move mine a little bit further down because I need an inch and a half from the bead to the loop. That looks about an inch and a half. Once you have the correct distance, grab both the loop and the two pieces of leather cord and then do one complete wrap. Now before you tighten it up, check both ends. Make sure they're both exactly the same, okay? Once you've verified they're both the same, go ahead and finish your wraps, okay? Now you want that leather to be on top of that wire. And you wanna do some very neat wraps And I would say do about maybe four or five. Bring them together so they're nice and neat. Once you've done your four or five wraps, go ahead and cut off the excess carefully so you don't cut the lever and tuck it in. Make sure that it's not sharp, okay? You need to check it with your finger. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and snip off this excess leather here. Get in there as close as you can with your flush cutters. And snip it off. Okay. 
come over to this sand, separate your wire from your leather, and snip off the excess wire, being careful not to cut your leather. Okay. I would come in here with some pliers and push that little sharp bit down and that's all there is to it. Now if you wanted to, if you have a thread burner, guys, okay, you could come in here and burn off the excess leather, whatever's sticking out, okay, and it actually melts it a little bit so that so it kind of seals it at the same time. Okay? Pretty easy and it looks very professional. Okay? All right, so let me go ahead and do this side now. Same thing. Grab the loop and the leather and then do your wraps. A little tricky because that leather wants to fall down but you want to try to keep it on top of that pin or, or um, the wire I should say and I'm doing four wraps again just like the other side bring the coils together so they're nice and neat snip off the excess tuck in whatever's sticking out, check it, make sure it's not sharp, snip off the excess leather, you may have to come in here a second time to trim it as close as you can without cutting the wire and then separate your wire from your leather on this end and trim it off tuck it in okay and once again with a thread burner or you could even use a lighter but be careful you know you don't want to burn yourself go ahead and burn the excess leather down a little bit just like that And look how pretty this looks. Pretty easy, guys. Pretty easy. Now we're going to attach this beautiful tiger eye chain. We're going to use jump rings to attach the chain to the necklace. I still have some clasps left from the Pantone box, and I think I'm going to use this one here. I have some jump rings here. These look like about 5 millimeter in size. Okay, so the first thing to do is to open up a jump ring. We're going to open up a jump ring. We're going to attach it to one of the strands of the necklace. And then we're going to attach this big strand of tiger eye beads right on there. I'm not going to cut it just yet, okay? Close up your jump ring really well. And now you have to decide how long you want your necklace, okay? You're gonna have to choose the length. I'm gonna make a very long necklace today, so I think I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is take this to the mirror and try it on and see exactly where I need to cut it. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've decided I'm gonna make my necklace 30 inches long. It's gonna be one of those long boho necklaces. And I'm gonna need about seven and a half inches of this chain on each side so a total of 15 inches okay so I have about 15 inches here so now I have to figure out where the center is because you want to make sure that both sides are even you're going to have to sacrifice one of these okay unfortunately so I'm going to snip this one off which is no big deal because I can always wrap this chip if I want to or use it somewhere else. So there's one piece and here's my other piece. It's already attached. Check them to make sure they are identical in length and then go ahead and do the same thing. Grab a jump ring, open it up, 
These are pretty thick. They're about 18 gauge, I think. Attach it. Close it up. And now all we have to do is attach the clasp, the toggle clasp. So grab a jump ring, open it up, attach one part of the toggle clasp, and now we'll attach the other part. You know this necklace is so long you probably don't need a clasp but you never know because you could do this you could you could do a wrap with this around your neck and have a shorter necklace let me show you you could have the toggle in the front like this wrap it around your neck twice and have this kind of style so I'm going to embellish this tassel a little bit more and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and as you can see, I've embellished the tassel a little bit more with some extra beads. I didn't want to put too many beads on there because then it takes away from the look of the leather. But there's just enough there to give it some interest. And isn't this gorgeous? Oh my gosh. It's hard to see the whole thing. There's the main beaded piece, as you can see. And then we have the beautiful tiger eye chain, the charms, the leaf charms at the top, the leather. It's so pretty. But anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I love the necklace, I love the colors, the variety of beads makes it look so interesting. Okay, let me go ahead and put it on and I'll show you what it looks like. Well, I have the beautiful necklace on, but it's very long, so I'm going to show you a video that I took earlier on outside. Okay, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you had some fun. I hope I've given you some inspiration. Go out and make your own necklaces. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.